Hi, you're with Shandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about nine interesting time-saving Power BI tricks. No further ado, let's begin. All right, tip number one has to do with page navigation and moving pages from one position to the other position inside of your Power BI report. Take a look at this report that I have, a lot of blank pages indeed, but I just wanted to, wanted to demonstrate that in case you want to move one page to the other position, how convenient is this trick? So take a look at page number 20. Maybe I want to move this particular page to the start at the first tab, and I don't really want to have this particular tab in the end. Generally, the way that you would do it is that you would select page number 20 and move it to uh, the end of the visible tabs, and then you will have to do it once again to the end of the visible tabs, and then once again, and then once again. Now, this causes a bit of trouble, especially when you have a lot of tabs inside of your Power BI report. Now, take a look at this particular trick that I'm going to share with you. So what you do is at the start, you start dragging this page. I mean, you click, you start dragging, and then you press the tab key. And once you do press the tab key, you will find that the page navigation gets activated. So right now, my tab has actually moved to the plus sign. If I just do the tab once again, my uh, tab has actually taken me to the index page, which was the first page inside of this particular uh, Power BI file. And I can just come here and I can drop this particular page number 20 right here. So I didn't really have to move in phases, you know, towards the end of the visible tab and then move it again to the, towards the end of the visible tab. I can just actually move it um, just at one go by hitting the tab key. Now, the other interesting trick is that once you do click on any particular page, the page navigation gets activated and especially the tab key starts to work. Now, if I actually click on any particular page, maybe page number 20 or page number 14, whatever that might be, and if I hit the tab key, you can see that it actually starts to navigate to the next page. So I hit the tab once, overview, next planner, next feedback, next cost, costly, miscellaneous downloads and stuff like that. It just kind of activates these pages and once you want to actually go to a particular page, all that you can do is you can actually press the enter key and you are on that particular page. Now this tab, which is actually now we are using to navigate pages, can also be used to insert pages. So what I can do is I can actually press the tab key and keep pressing the tab key until and unless I reach the plus sign. And once I do reach that plus sign, I can just press the enter a bunch of times and this is actually going to insert a couple of pages uh, right towards the end. All right, trick number two has also to do with page navigation a little more smartly than we discussed in trick number one. Now take a look, generally the way to navigate pages is by maybe clicking on the particular page here or perhaps using the tab key. So if I maybe click on feedback, if I just use the tab key, I can actually go navigate to that particular page and press enter. But what if there are like really a lot of pages inside of your Power BI model? How do you navigate faster? What you can actually do is come to these two arrow signs that you have it on the bottom, maybe right click on one of these arrow signs and you're gonna get the list of all the pages or all the tabs which are there inside of your model. You can choose to navigate through all these pages using a mouse click or maybe even hit the tab and you can actually navigate through all the pages. And if you want to go to a particular page, just click on that particular page and you will be actually directed towards that page. Simple. All right, trick number three is about zooming inside of Power Query. If the size of the font and the screen in Power Query, which is so tiny, makes it difficult to read the stuff that is there on the Power Query window, there is a very nifty trick available to actually zoom the size of the screen inside of Power Query. All that you do is you maybe just, when you are working inside of Power Query, you just click anywhere, and then you just press the shortcut Control Shift plus sign, and this will actually start to zoom everything which is actually in this part of the window. So this part of the window actually zooms in, which contains your steps, which contains the sample of the data, which actually also contains the list of the queries that you have. Even the formula bar is going to be zoomed in. What you would not see zooming in is the um, ribbon on the top and the buttons on the top. They would actually not zoom in. Additionally, when you're trying to write a custom column and you're trying to insert a custom formula, that also zooms in, but it, actually, it is actually very weird in terms of its zooming. So please take a look. It's not really a good screen to take a look at. So if I actually go to the Add Columns tab and create on a custom column, and if I just try to maybe zoom this particular screen, if I just press Control Shift Plus, this actually does zoom in, but you can see that part of the screen is cropped and I won't be able to take a look at the formula. This is kind of disturbing and I don't really like this part of zooming, but although zooming generally in Power Query works just fine, I learned this trick from one of the videos that Adam Saxton did on zooming. You should actually take a look at that as well. All right, trick number four has to do with converting any visual into a table. Now, the trick that I'm going to share with you will not actually convert the visual or change the visual into a table visual. It will just show that as a temporary visual. 
So take a look, what I can actually do is maybe the line chart here, I'd like to take a look at all the values and all the values should appear in the table format. What I can actually do on this particular visual is that click on that visual and use the shortcut Alt Shift F11 to convert that into a focus mode and in the tabular format. Now here I can actually take a look at the visual and I can also see this particular visual. I can actually press the escape sign to actually go back to my report and actually start working with the report. This particular shortcut is nothing but like the shortcut of thing which is already available to you by the click base interface. So if I actually click on the visual and I have something like a focus mode here on the top and once I actually click on the focus mode and click on the ellipses right here, I can also show it as a table. And that is nothing that I have done using that particular shortcut, which is Alt Shift F11. In case you have a different keyboard, that shortcut might just work with the function key. So you'll have to press Alt uh, Shift and function F11 in case that uh, doesn't work with just the F11 key. All right, the next trick has to do with toggling between different objects that are available to you on the screen. So once you're working on the report and the canvas right here, you can click anywhere on the uh, empty canvas. And once you actually click on the empty canvas, now you have activated the toggling between any of the objects that appear. These objects could be pictures, slicers, charts, tables, whatever that might be. All that you have to do is hit the tab key and this will start to toggle between all the visuals that are available one by one by one. And the order in which this toggles is, I believe, the order in which the objects are positioned in terms of layering. And this is not really ordering in terms of how the objects are actually arranged on the screen. So tab key actually uh, toggles between different objects that are available. And if you actually press the shift tab, it actually toggles in the reverse order in case you would like to do that. All right, my next trick has to do with moving objects on the screen. Now, this is pretty common knowledge that if you actually pick up any particular object, by object, I mean a table, a chart, a text box, a picture, anything that is appearing on the canvas. Let's just say that if I perhaps want to move this table slightly up, there are two ways to it. I mean, you can either use the mouse to actually drag this up or down. That's one of the valid ways. The other way that generally people use it is also the keyboard. So if you actually press the selected and then if you press the up key on the keyboard, this table actually moves up and this is absolutely fine. Now, once you're actually using the arrow keys, the table slightly nudges at every press of the arrow key. The movement is very, very small. What you can actually do is you can actually use the shift and the arrow key. So if I'm using the shift and the up arrow key, this is actually going to not really nudge by a small distance. This is actually going to move faster uh, up or down or any direction that you actually would like to move the objects on the screen. All right, moving objects actually bring me to the next important point. Let's just say that you have created the visual, everything is packed, ticked and tied and ready. Uh, now what happens is that if you are actually sending this report or maybe even sharing the Power BI file with somebody, what, is, what might just happen is that if the visuals are not locked, somebody might just accidentally move the visuals and distort their position. So what you can actually do is you can actually go to the view tab and you can actually click on lock objects. Locking off the objects is still going to enable the interaction between the slicers and the visuals, but it will not let the user move the objects from their actual position. So if I now maybe try to move the table, I would not be able to move the table. I can actually click on any part of the table and I can work with the table, but I would not be able to move the table and change its position. All right, trick number eight has to do with drill up or drill down or maybe expand the table using a keyboard shortcut. So take a look, as of now, maybe this particular table has been selected by me and I wanna use these uh, buttons on the top to be able to drill down or expand the table and do further things around with the table. How do you actually do that? You can actually use the shortcut Alt Shift F10 to be able to actually select one of these uh, buttons on the top and then you can use the arrow keys to navigate between the buttons and whatever you wanna do, maybe drill down, drill up or expand the table, you can actually do it with the enter and this is actually going to work pretty efficiently. All right, the final trick. You can actually use a control P as a shortcut to export your report as a PDF document. The control P is generally used to print anything, but uh, you can actually in Power BI, the control P works for exporting the report as a PDF document. So if I'm on this particular report, there are five, six pages here. Maybe if I just go ahead and press control P, it actually initiates uh, the exporting of that report as a PDF document. And you can see that it just takes a while, goes through all the pages one by one, converts them all into a PDF, packs it into a single document and presents them on the screen right away. All right, now you can see that that particular document has been exported into uh, a PDF. And I can just scroll through all of the pages and I can just take a look at that particular document. 
Now, if you're wondering that where is this particular document stored inside of your PC, you can actually right click on the on the document right here and go over to document properties. This is actually one of the subfolders inside of your temp Power BI desktop. And if you just click on this particular location right here, you can actually retrieve the document and just send it to whosoever you want. All right, those were my nine tricks on Power BI. And I'd love to know that how many tricks did you learn from this particular video and how many tricks did you already know? And if you have any cool tricks that you actually apply and work inside of your Power BI models, these are cool, smart, nifty and help you save a bunch of time. I would love that you actually share these tricks with all of us in the comment section and I'd love to take a look at that. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI and you need help with fundamentals first and then building on your level so that you can start solving more sophisticated, more real-time problems of your own data, be it Power Query, be it DAX, I would love that you take a look at the courses that I have. They're going to be immensely helpful. Thanks so much for watching this. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.